Okay, mirror matchup. I know you guys were... We, we talked about this at the beginning of the night, and I was saying how the amount of control players at the shop is crazy because, you know, six, eight months ago, it was just all aggro all the time. And now things are slowing down to the point where we're seeing three control lists make it onto camera. We're seeing Tron players, which not necessarily a slow deck, but Tron players coming out in more response to these slower decks. We're also seeing more of those mid-rangey decks um, start to pop up as well. So it's kind of a nice slowdown format that has started to uh, take place. Alright, players rolling, double checking who's going to go first. I, I'm not 100% sure if these are the right two names in the right order because I'm not used to everybody's hands. But it's Michael versus TJ. I'm pretty sure TJ's on the right. Uh, I could be wrong. <laughs> but they're both playing blue-white control. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it's just complete stock list by stock list. I hope that some players will take the time to adjust the flex spots um, and find d specific cards that work best for them in specific situations or specific metas but you know to each their own everyone's playing their own list their own decks All right, so here is our first set of everything going on. We got a wall of Omen to let him draw some cards. We saw an opt over here on the left-hand side. And it's going to be a lot of that draw go. Whoa, maybe it's not blue-white control. Looks like it's Esper. Or Demir control. Esper control? We're going to write Esper for now. Because it looks like there's a path in Michael's hand. You know, not all lists are running Wall of Omen. Part of that, too, could be based on the aggro stuff that was at the shop for quite a while. Field the Ruin. And Michael will pass. Let's blow this up. After your draw step. Flota Blue. Casey has an opt. I don't know. Alright, both players were able to get a basic. Another field of ruin. 
Only one more <laughs> target of my land, though. TJ gonna play that tapped and pass. He said uh, Michael's gonna draw two cards. And that's great being able to do that draw two. Cause fighting over it now, it it's one of those like feel bad moments, right? But TJ is happy to kinda do that. Maybe giving indication that he does have another counter spell potentially available for whatever Michael might try to do on his turn. And that's a lot of this control mirror is kind of this let's try to fight over something, right? You want to wait until you have a lot of resources to kind of make that happen. Oh, here's the first of fairy. Snapcaster. Did he pick an op there? Looks like he'll opt to draw a card. Likes that one. Colonnade comes in tap, but does finally give Michael access to white mana that he's been needing. Second Snapcaster going to be coming out. What are, we, what are we going for here? Another opt, it looks like. Again, cannot do those during your opponent's turn as long as our Teferi friend is out there on the board. That Time Raveler is pretty strong. He says, hey, I'm coming at you. And that wall is going to easily do some hugging. Ooh, five mana. It says, hey, the coast is clear. All you got is one black mana. I'm going to play my other Teferi, our good friend Hero of Dominaria. Uptick to draw a card, and I'll get to untap two of my lands. Gonna be getting another planes, and yeah, we'll lose three for this to get that hollowed fountain. Guys, my mic is going to get muted for a sec.
Alright, there we go. Sorry, my mic got a little bit discombobulated. Apologize for that. Alright, uh, miss a little bit, but Planeswalkers are still around for now. Snippity Snapcasters trying to do their best to push for damage. Sure, so Vision's gonna get used. Detention Sphere to try to get rid of all those Snapcasters. That's pretty nice. Let's blow up your colonnade. TJ double checking his hand to see what cards he's got. Maybe, maybe seeing if he's wants to respond to that now in some form. Make a blue. Let's uh, have this colonnade try to come and kill him. Path to exile. Mm. So that will resolve. It, I don't know if he has a um, snapcast or anything. Like, alright, I guess my hero of Dominary will be defeated now. TJ is still looking for something else. Surgical there, he'll take two. Go to 18. Did I... Have I been missing all the fetches, guys? I feel like Michael went to 17. Yeah, he did. Why didn't it update? What? What is going on? Okay, so it's updated on my end, but it's not on your guys' end. So our life totals are off. There we go. 
That was weird. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know why it wasn't working that way. Uh, I found a, a workaround. Uh, so, oh, went for the veto, stripping away those just to, like, make sure that he can 100% be able to get by and not worry about his spells not being able to do these counter wars. So, smart, smart play. Ooh, all right, so Narset does make things challenging in this kind of control mirror in a sense that you can gain card advantage off of it. You also um, prevent your opponent from drawing more cards. Now, uh, Narset essentially is a search for Ascanta for minus two. Um, so that is pretty nice that you get to find that non-creature, non-land, um, and add it to your hand. That's going to force a cryptic out, though. We're going to try to counter that. Draw a card, maybe. So there's a logic knot in his hand, but he's not going to fight over that right now. Looks like he wants to try to play a Jace or something else. So here's this weird thing. Um, spells resolved. Our spell was countered. Cool. It's still Michael's turn, I think, priority wise. Um, I don't know. Sequencing is weird in that regard and, and this priority. But I think it falls back to Michael's. He's got the priority. That TJ shouldn't be able to just cast something without Michael doing something. But I'm not 100% sure on that because I'm not a judge. And I'm not sure with that sequencing. But I will, I will do my best to try to ask somebody about it tomorrow when I'm at the shop to see. Just so I know for sequencing purposes and other people will know too. That's the big point of this is try to l help people learn and understand Is that what the uh, like SCG, uh, or not SCG, uh, Comic Con version of Jace? I don't know. It's just like all dark and foily. So Fate Seal. Put it on the bottom, whatever it was. And passes turn after that. So now it falls to TJ. Another to fairy.
pushing for some damage. This fairy was able to tuck Jace away for at least the time being. Activate, let's try to kill him. And then he says, okay, here's a path. I'm ready. Oh, it is not a path. It's the, um, what is that, oust? Put target creature into its owner's library second from the top. Its controller gains three life. What a nice guy. You look like you were low on life. So I'd like to give you three. But we're actually going to see him fetch down to 14 here. And try to fight over this. And by 14, I mean 12. I mean, he does have three mana available. So we'll see what he tries to navigate at this point. Alright, navigating through, else was negated there. TJ trying to navigate through his lands, get him set up. Colonnade, I'm going to push for six damage dropping you to six. To fairy. Nope. Let's just counter that all together. No one's veto so good in this control matchup mirror here we got going on. Oh, this didn't even change either. It's not. <sighs> Nothing is changing on this text. That's really weird. Okay, so Michael not able to make something happen there. That was a grindy one, guys. And it's really just sort of knowing how and when to do some fighting. All right. So now we're going to go into sideboard here, try to find some cards that could be of use. I still need to check on that sequencing thing because I think... I don't know. It seems a weird one. Just seems weird to me. On your opponent's turn to be able to cast stuff to target them during their main phase when they haven't even done anything. Like, they're not s changing phases. They're not going from main phase one to combat or anything like that. They're just going through and blasting with spells. So I don't know. I, I have to check. But I don't know if that works the way that TJ thought it did. Or I could just be completely off base and wrong, which has happened many a times.
Alright, so both players sideboarding up, getting things ready to go here. Now, again, the way it's set up is the max amount of time the players get is 50 minutes before it goes to turns. And they get five turns to try to beat somebody. It's been about 20 minutes or so. So this is, you know, it's been quite a long game one. But sometimes that happens, right? Game two, you're able to get the chance to... bring in more threats from a lot of the lists, right? Some of the blue-white lists might run things like Geist or things like that in the board or, you know, these other ways to kind of close the game a little bit faster than they might have in game number one. So we're going to have to wait and see what these players are going to be bringing in for game number two. If they have more counter spells, they're going to be bringing more counter spells, more surgicals, things like that. These, like, hate cards and stuff so it'll be interesting to see how it works out for game two Alright, here we go. Colonnade, pass. Colonnade, pass. Nice land go. This is how the last game started, and it's going to be kind of normal in a control mirror. Serum. Let's kind of get things set up then. Serum is quite nice in this sort of situation where you're really planning multiple turns ahead. Let's blow up your white source there. Let's both get a land.
Alright guys, so we're still just fighting over lands at this point in time between these two players. They're just kind of finding basics, destroying non-basics. It's just sort of this kind of back and forth, back and forth. Nothing too crazy happening because we're not at the fighting over spells yet. Right? It's all about the same gain advantage at this point. Thank you. So we're going to be seeing more serums, more ops, things like that taking place from these players. Why is none of my stuff updating? I have no idea why things are not updating the way they should, guys. It's kind of weird. Another field of ruin. Michael's got a lot of counter spells in his hand. Cryptic Command, Dovin's Veto, um, and Logic Knot. And it looks like he moved to discard and had to discard that Cryptic Command. Yikes. That feels bad. Ooh, he's going for it. I'd like to cast my Teferi. Says, okay, you've had a discard. Maybe I can sneak by and be okay. But, not going to happen. Counter it. Can't be countered. Alright, here's a threat, he says, with a Snapcaster. I'd like to target this serum, actually. And I would like to cast this serum. TJ is really in control right now with just the amount of lands that he has. You know, compared to the three, Michael's kind of stuck, right? Which never feels good when you're trying to play, especially when you're battling against somebody in a control mirror and you're just like come on deck why, why do you hate me so much and yeah Michael might have to discard again what's he gonna discard So TJ looks like he might be ready to start trying to fight over something again. So here's... Oh no, he's actually going to push damage. Here's six. Michael's going to fall to 14. Opt. Can I find a land? Is basically what he's thinking. TJ's debating whether he wants to fight over it. You see him pull a dispel to the top, and yeah, he's going to actually say, you know what, I have a bunch of counter spells that I've just been sitting here, and clearly you keep missing land drops, you're trying to find a land, so I'm not going to let that happen.
surgical. What's he going to strip away here? He's going to lose two life. Go to 18. Well, we're going to show off his hand. We go with the Dovins again. Demdare Dovin. Yep. Safe bet. Blah. And now TJ can do a quick gander through what other cards that Michael might have sideboarded in for this matchup. But now he knows, okay, you do have the snap, you have the stubborn denial, right? you have Teferi, you have Jace, you have, it looks like have the angel over there on the far left, um, and two logic knots. So the logic knots are not available, but the disdainful stroke is something that he can cast this turn. Coming at you for six. Snapcaster. Does TJ need to fight over this? I don't think you need to. You're not you don't want to cast path. Ooh, that's a good one to fight over with that. Spell snare. And six points of damage. Michael's gonna fall to eight. Finds a land. Ooh, goes to six. There's Jace. And there's the hand. The stainful stroke. Looks like that's what that is, maybe. Or negate. I don't know. But whatever it is, it counters it. There's the hand. T